Welcome to the Big East Rewind. Sunny Spirit today filling in as lead host for Chuck Everson. Chuck was watching the uh, Nova UCLA game yesterday, so he couldn't make it when we were setting this up. So we have as our guest host, our main man from the West Coast, Gene Smith. <laughs> National champ, Georgetown Hoyas, 84 grad. And our show today is going to be a fun one. We're going to talk to the Syracuse cheerleaders, and we have a couple of generations crossover from when the Big East actually came to being to as the Big East developed, from the Saltine Warrior to No Mascot to the Orange and how that all happened, and then what happened when cheerleading changed and how that all came about. So we're going to introduce – let me introduce our guests. This is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to start first, Bill. Laddick and Bill is a cheerleader from 77 to 81, currently in the North Carolina area. Welcome, Bill. Thanks for being Thank on. Thank you. Show. Thank you. Hello, everybody. All right. Next, uh, we're going to go Michelle Munn Burke. She is in Florida. She is from 79 to 82. She's joining us. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Hello, everybody. All right, and we're going to have next hey. Eric Heath. We're kind of trying to go chronologically as best we can. Again, this is Chuck's thing. I'm doing my best. Try it. <laughs> Eric Heath, and Eric was from 80 to 84, and he took a little sabbatical to go to clown college. And you know we're going to talk about that for sure, because that is not a common trip. So welcome, Eric. How are you? Ah, great. And last but not least, this is my classmate, Amy Cavalieri Callahan. She's currently in the state of Massachusetts, and she was from 82 to 85. So welcome, Amy. Thank you. I know you guys were all a little Everybody. tiny bit tiny bit nervous, but it's just going to go very smooth. Okay. Nice. okay. Take Chilies your word. Chilies never get nervous. Yeah. That's right. Now I, we all have to. We have to stay. Let, let's let's put this in context. We are recording this the day after Syracuse played Georgetown <laughs> in Georgetown. <laughs> So we got to we got we got to just revel in that just for a second we'll soak it in and we'll move on. That's all the right. only reason I'm all, the only reason I'm here is to allow you to do that. <laughs> oh, you gave me permission. I appreciate that. Well, we've had we had a bad run down at Georgetown. I think we haven't won for 6 or 7 years. That's what they said yesterday. <clears throat> for the record, uh we've been playing you we've been playing each other since 1930s. And you currently I think this was game number 99 or something. Yeah, and lead in the series like 53, 54 to 43 or something. My math is bad this early in the morning on the West Coast, but you lead in the series. So just <laughs> just for clarity, just for clarity. Well, it's it's been it's not easy. I can tell I can remember my four years. I know what that record was. All right. So let's start out with how did you get into cheerleading? Let's start with that first. Wow. Uh, Bill, you want to start, take that. How did you get into cheerleading? What was sure, your I was just recounting to Michelle the other day. I was a freshman. I came from mid-state New York. No sign of cheerleading in my history. Um, messing around in the gym. One of the cheerleaders, Donna Amaral, sees me, starts talking me up. They're looking for people to join the squad at that time. So she, you know, she, she did it. She talked to <laughs> And uh, convinced me to join, and I joined my freshman year, which was 77, and I was there for four years and all through football, basketball, and um, yeah, that's how I got into it. How about you, Michelle? Um, well, I cheerleaded in uh, middle school and high school, okay. and then um, the university had a special tryout in December of 78 because a girl was going abroad and another one, I guess, had left the squad. Um, so they did a special tryout for two girls and we started in January of 79. Um, and then every year after that. So it was exceptional experience. How about you, Eric? What was your background? Anything to do with cheerleading prior to Syracuse? No, no, no. I went to a small school in New Hampshire. That <clears throat> we didn't even have a football team. Mm. So um, I, I tried a bunch of sports and I was I didn't excel at any. Um, I was riding my unicycle <laughs> across campus one day and uh, the cheerleader sent someone to chase me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they uh, they uh, 
uh, asked me to audition for the squad. That was in the spring of 80, no, 79. So I started cheering in the fall of, of 80. And uh, that was when the, the dome was brand new. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. Absolutely. So amazing. Watching them build that dome. So what you're telling me, Gene and Bill, is you two guys got recruited, right? Yeah. All right. Well, they did a nice job there. Amy, how about yourself? I was a cheerleader in high school and then went to Syracuse and I found out you couldn't be a cheerleader freshman year. So it was probably the springtime and you could try out. I didn't tell anybody I was trying out. I was like, it didn't go well. No one had to know, but uh, made it. I was like, okay. And um, just started there. So 82. Was was cheerleading anything like what it was in college, what it was like in high school? Because it seems like it was way more involved in college. Nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. Nothing. In, in high school, you'd maybe stay after school, practice, and you had games that night. When you started into college, you had travel days. For football, we'd leave on a Friday afternoon, come back a Sunday afternoon, practice twice a week, a couple hours in the evening. And during basketball, you'd leave during the day and, you know, usually stay over that night and get back the next day. So you had to work with professors on your schedule and assignments and testing. And it was a lot more, a lot more involved. And from a year point of view, I remember going to school like two weeks before the populace of Syracuse went. Right. And then we went, if we went home for Thanksgiving or Christmas, it was just for a day or two and then right mm -hmm. back because we had games all through Thanksgiving mm -hmm. break and Christmas break. Right. So we were there with each other for the entire school year minus a couple of days. How about like the, also the lifts and those kind of moves? I don't, I don't, I mean, my high school, we didn't do that. Like, no. Well, I think because in high school, it was more about the cheers themselves. When you get to the college level, you can't really hear us that well, that it was more about visual stunts right. and mm -hmm. smaller cheers because you're just trying to get the crowd going uh -huh. it was it's a different totally different it was unique in that it was also the only sport i guess you would call it in which men and women worked together mm -hmm. they were very sure. you know all the other teams you've got a men's team and a women's team and here we were working together and going on these trips and doing these amazing things it was just amazingly. Yeah, I, I love um, doing the wonderful. Stuff, especially with Michelle. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the other cheerleaders, Lisa and Anaya at the time, Gibbs now, uh, the two of us went to camp at SMU in Dallas uh, one summer, I guess, was. Uh, so that was fun. We met other cheerleaders from across the nation that were there at that cheerleading camp and brought back ideas to the squad and learned partner stunts and so on. It was fun. But that's what I'm interested in. What was the rapport like uh, in the Big East uh, with other cheerleading squads? Or was there a rapport? Was there a favorite squad? Or was there any animosity like 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 we had on the court? Uh, I'd be interested in that. No. No. Not, not really. No, yeah. I don't think there was any animosity. We, we would meet before the games and decide who had first time out and who had, you know, things like that. And then we'd bring them drinks on the home games during halftime. Um, but I, I can't say there was a favorite. I think everybody was on the same page, really. Mm -hmm. how, how about social? Did you guys socialize? Like when you guys traveled to, I don't know, Boston College, did you guys, you know, hang out together, have anything? Because you guys would go up on the evening before. Any of that kind of stuff going on? No, not that I remember. Really? We hung out together. Yeah, we never really got together outside of the game, but I, you know, because we played the same teams over and over each year, we saw the same group of people from cheerleaders Correct. to announcers. You know, so everybody knew our faces, and we would talk while we were there. But it's not so like there was there was no trash talking. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Just between the mascots. That, that's <laughs> between the mascots. Well, I had mentioned to Sonny, like maybe I should bring on the Georgetown mascot from the years that I was there. And I think we had a couple. And so it was like, well, maybe we'll do that for another show. Um, uh -huh. But 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 I honestly got to say, I, I'm really interested in what was it like 
securing in in the carrier dome. Like how, <laughs> yeah, how incredible. Right. I mean there were there were games with you know twenty to twenty six thousand people and in certain games and Georgetown was one of them, it was just a roar. You couldn't hear anything. I mean it just incredible feeling. Yeah, I have to say, since I was the crossover, I was in Manly for my first two years, watched the Dome built in my third year, played in the Dome in my fourth year. And, you know, Manly is like Syracuse's version of Cameron, um, really tight and, you know, confined and, you know, intimate and so on. The Dome is just huge. And I remember the Georgetown, Connecticut games where the crowd spilled around, you know, we had 50, you know, half the dome was for basketball, but the crowd spilled around the edges so much that, you know, the person on the very outside could barely see the court. It was 33,000 people <laughs> and it was just hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, pol uh, the dome sorry. reminded, or Manly reminded me of the palestra. It was just suffocating, you mm -hmm. know, the, between the, the crowd and, and the players on that tiny little court. Where, where did you fit at the at Manly? Right under the basket. Right mm -hmm. under the basket? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So you had about six feet to work with me? Six, eight feet? Yeah, maybe, yeah not much. I mean, there was tripping and everything going on. <laughs> <laughs> but just even in the carrier dome, we were right right on the court. We had the best right. in the house. We said, who, who wouldn't want to do this? We watched the right. game from the best position there was. Yes. Except yes. when you... you People probably didn't realize that the basketball players sometimes would come colliding into us. Oh and, yeah, you know it got a little a little hard there sometimes because mm -hmm. they were coming full force. Oh yeah, yep. And I mean, we would just watch them make these baskets. I used to watch them dunk the pearl when he was just dunk, and he always had that grin on his face when he did it too. Mm -hmm. He knew he was he was happy. <clears throat> you guys kind of touched on it a little bit earlier when you were talking about the the rigors like working with professors, your scheduling. Um, were you noticed a lot on campus? Um, were, were, did it help or hurt, hurt or hinder your social life? Um, and then if you could speak to the, were there, what was it an adrenaline rush? Like what, 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 was, it, what was it like, like pre-game, post-game uh, being the cheerleader? Like what, 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 what was your process like? Go ahead, Bill. You start. Yeah. Um, so I remember, especially in football, I mean, the whole Saturday, the whole campus, I mean, from the marching band and us getting to the stadium and all that spectacle, that was that was cool. I think uh, people recognize my face because I was out on the court all the time. And so every now and then walking through campus, you know, hey, you know, I don't know if they knew Bill, but, you know, they would say hey to me and I'm like, do I know you? Uh, I, you know, so there was a lot of that. But, um, yeah, it was fun. I mean, uh, getting to the games. And I remember uh, in Manly, as opposed to the Dome, the students had one slice of the section. And it was first come, first serve. So when they opened up doors, there was a stampede and diving on seats to be able to fill that up. Uh, that was just great to start the game off like that. So, so you'd say it helped your social life, you say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it didn't hurt or help. I mean, it was just. I'm, it's okay. We're not. It's not TMZ. Don't worry. We're not going deep. We're, we're, we're not judging. We're not judging. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know that. I think our social life was the cheerleading. I mean, it yeah, took yeah. up so much of our time. I mean, most of the cheerleaders are still some of my very best friends. I keep in touch with them, and not all of them, but not because I wasn't friendly. It's just they were our social life. That's where your weekends were spent and your spare time. So. What do you say? And, Go ahead. Yeah. I, I don't know that it changed our social life. And, and yes, people did recognize us, but I, I think it's the same as any other sport. People recognized people, you know, it just gave you another avenue to be recognized. Mm -hmm. it, we became one big family. They, uh, we were all just brothers and sisters, really. I mean, you mm -hmm. spent a whole unbelievable amount of time with these people and yeah. we were doing stunts with guys and there was never it was always just we wanted to try and get it done we wanted to make sure we got it and there was never any 
it was just one big happy family, but you do get recognized. You'd hear, oh, well, so-and-so has a picture of you in his dorm room. I'm like, How could, what? You know, you find out little things along the way that, but we definitely did get recognized. For me, um, it was an incredible opportunity and being a clown, being an entertainer, to go out onto that court and have 20,000 or more people to work with. <laughs> they would do just about <laughs> anything, anything you asked. But sometimes the, the crowd became very clever. At one point, we had two signs that said, we are and SU. And we would try to get one side of the stadium to yell, we are, and the other side to yell, SU. And it depended when we started off with the student section, they would yell the opposite of what was on the sign. And it would be, we are, we are, we are. <laughs> I, got, I got to ask you, speaking of the introduction and the signs, I, I had never seen it before, but when they would announce the other teams, we had a five rotation, like, who's he? Big yeah. deal, right? So, so what? Who cares? What's that? Yeah, so, Bill, were you part of that, Bill? Like the, oh, like, yeah, that was... A, oh, a, yeah. A, I mean, the tradition of, uh, I guess, clapping until um, the first, yep, first basket, basket was made, yep. and then the who, who's he, so what, who cares, big deal, and then, you know, the last one, um, mm. that was there. How about the, how about the announcements parts? Was that, did that start? Was that before your time did that start? But was that like always a tradition? The announcements? No. Yeah. The starting team would come out and we, and they would bring out the sign. And oh yeah. Was, that was from the, the day, day, day I got there. That was. Yeah. That was same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There were names written on the backs of the signs and years from uh -huh. the people oh, that had cool. held them up on the original signs. I think the, those signs fell apart from use. Do you, do you remember it? Do you remember it? When, when when they announced the starting five, they would stay, they would there would be a guy in the Syracuse cheer, and they would be like a guy or a gal, and it would be like, who's he? And everybody, and they would announce, you know, starting at guard, Gene Smith, and the whole crowd would go, who's he? Do you remember That's that? Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I wasn't starting. <laughs> <so I'm going laughs> <laughs> but but what I, what I do just want to add is just how important. And I didn't, again, I, I, I talked about in the pregame, how important the, the cheerleading and the band was in terms of supporting the team, especially on the road. And sometimes the band didn't always travel, um, but it, I, I really, I don't know if you guys have been lauded or I, th I think this is a wonderful idea by Sonny, um, but you guys were really, really a big deal. Um, Appreciate and, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, I was going to say the pep band, we were really tight with the pep band because they went Absolutely. pretty much everywhere we went. Sometimes yeah. we'd go and they wouldn't, but generally we were together. So we, I remember going to Purdue for basketball in probably my third year. That was a 14 hour bus ride with the band and the cheerleaders where the Ooh. racks of the bus were chock full of uh, Jenny cream ale and rolling rock, you know, just cheap beer that we could drink the whole way. <laughs> That was a great. great I recently trip. saw that game on YouTube. Now that you mentioned it, I just saw yeah. that. We, and we won that one out there. So, so speaking of the band, explain that to me if you guys don't mind. Your the the cheerleading squad was considered part of the band. Mm -hmm. yes. Like Villanova was part of the athletic department, so they had, you know, transportation and stuff. What was that like? What was that like to to, to besides? 14 hour bus rides. I mean, what was it like to travel in the, in the band always went? Yeah, not always. I mean, Michelle, you maybe remember, I think there was a, a administrator named Ulysses and I think he controlled yeah. the budget yeah. that covered the band and the cheerleaders. I'm mm -hmm. not sure where the money came from and he would have to figure out his allocation, you know, mm -hmm. for these games, the cheerleaders are going for those games. The, the pep bands also going, it generally, I, mean, I think we went more than the pep band went, but they didn't go without us. Right. Um, and I think we we traveled with four couples, like eight cheerleaders versus mm -hmm. the 16 that we had um, just for budget reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely half the mm -hmm. squad went. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. The travel squad. And then during basketball, because you played Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, sometimes you'd go to the Monday game and not the Wednesday game, depending on your, your workload. So it, you know, 
traveling with only eight kind of helped the you know situation for the academics. Well, that makes sense now because it wasn't always the same eight faces when I was, I remember that. Correct. The same people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that makes sense. So let's talk about, which we did a little bit off air, but let's talk about, I'm going to ask Bill this and I'm going to get to Michelle and everybody as well. You were pre Big East, right? So you were part of, we were Empire 8 or? We uh, were uh, independent, independent my first year. Yeah. ETAC. And East Coast Athletic yeah, We were Conference. part of the ECAC, I think, with, with yeah, like and then some Big of East those the teams. Last two so years. what, was, what yes. was it like before the Big East came? And then what did you know? What was the first thing you noticed when all of a sudden we're in the Big East? Well, I mean, it was, for me, brand new everything. So I didn't know what it was like before I got there, right? But it, it was just the normal New Yorkish kind of teams, the Siena's, Canisius, St. Bonnie's, uh, Temple, you know, mm -hmm. just that kind of every year in the first two years. Um, how about the, how about the A's, financial commitment from the school was much, much less, right? Yeah. I mean, this, this budget we speak of, we never saw the dollars or we just felt the dollars, right? So we would go to a handful of games, non big East, um, maybe at, uh, at season end when we we're in the tourney or something, we would go, but throughout the regular season, not, not much. And then my last two years in the Big East, a lot more dollars. We're going to a lot more games. We got a much better team, much higher profile. Uh, we're into some really big uh, Big East tournaments at at the Dome and, and at Madison Square Garden. So we're always there in postseason, and we're there a lot more in, in regular season. And you like, had the television cameras. Just, you, you'd get you took the words people right call out and say, hey, I saw you on TV last night. It's I like, was just oh, going to okay. ask you, Michelle, about that very same thing. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, mm -hmm. TV cameras, and it became part of the experience. Because they were oftentimes right next to you on the floor. Yeah. They were there, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes in the way, but they were there. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, we, we didn't know when we were on or not on. It, usually it took someone telling us that, oh, we saw you last night because mm -hmm. they were in in the area. Right. You remember, What was that like, Eric, having the cameras like right in your jaw, right in your, your girl? <laughs> it was it was uh, very interesting. Um, if he, it, some some of the cheerleaders, you know, got got wise to when it would possibly be on and would just jump right out there and be doing their, yeah. <laughs> you were kind of fun. taught that. You were kind of taught if the camera came around, they really wanted you yeah. along and, and doing that because that's what they needed for, for right. the TV. So you yeah. knew if the camera was coming, there's like all this like, what are you doing? And as soon as they left, we all went, okay, back to normal. <laughs> yeah, we, my family, we went to see a, um, a Jay Leno Tonight Show and, and they prepped the audience like you wouldn't believe. And they're like, because the camera's going to come around and you have, and when this light is on, they like, they pump you up to do all that stuff. So yeah, it's part of the performance. I, I have something I want to ask. Uh, the Go group. ahead. Um, Madison Square Garden, the Big East Tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your preparation like for that? And then the NCAA Tournament, what was your preparation like for that? And then preparing for home, certain certain teams, was it any different type of preparation, but just your preparations in general, but particularly Madison Square Garden and NCAA Tournament, what was that like? Well, how about first you realized when we we're in Big East for Madison Square Garden, you realize everyone got to go on spring break to Florida, wherever they were going, not us. I remember that because not yep. us either. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, like, I didn't know that part of this job. Like we didn't get to do what everybody else did. But I remember, a job. It was a job. Yeah, it became a job. Like, but I remember we, we, you, we always got there early and the lights weren't on yet. And remember it take a long time in the, the for the lights to come on and it's cold in there too. So the lights would slowly, slowly get brighter and brighter and then some would burst. So out of the air, this broken pieces of hot glass would come down, yeah. hit us in the uniform, burn holes in our jackets. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I bet you that doesn't happen today, but mm -hmm. we said burn more. Like, oh, here comes the glass again, coming down. There's a, beside, there's a behind the scenes look right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Now, yeah, I, I don't know that we prepared any differently, though. I mean, no. we, throughout the year, we're working on pyramids or formations, dance numbers, whatever. Um, but we didn't do anything special for I and mean, we knew we'd be on TV and it'd be a high profile game. So 
we had to have our crap together, but you know, other than but, that, but just... NCAA travel was different, right? Wasn't travel provided for you guys? Uh, same in the as tournament, any... yeah, NCAA, tournament. Yeah. Prov yeah, provided for so many couples, I think, for travel. And but you flew, just, right? Just you, weren't, you weren't busing to like Texas, right? You flew, right? Uh, yeah, depending depending on how far was, away. If it was a distance, if it was Madison Square Garden, it's a three hour right. bus ride. To, yeah. That was plus. I mean, I mean, Sonny, I find that I give these guys even more credit. Like, they didn't even get an upgrade when you're going to the Big East and when you're going to the tournament. We right. at least got like some per diem went up a little bit. Yeah. Not as much as the Syracuse as in, in Georgetown. Because Bayhaw was a little, little, little looser with the purse strings. I, I, you know, I don't know if you know Coach B real well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. But we know Coach Thompson wasn't giving up anything. But you would think these guys got an, uh, uh, a little, you know, a little perk. Yeah. Did you guys get some like per diem money for like meals we, and stuff? We did. We did. Did, we did, did, it, get, get, did it get better? Or did, did it get like better around twenty bucks or something? You know, right? yeah. oh, yeah, next to the hotel McDonald's. was McDonald's. I think we used to go to McDonald's with twenty dollars. Part of the sell for me, anyway, from the get go, was all the sponsored clothing. So you get free tennis shoes <laughs> and uniform and coats and miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I pulled out my forty-year-old um, Syracuse yeah. jacket that I wore oh, yeah. every day for four Put that years. That on eBay, Bill. Put that on eBay. <laughs> Um, but that, that was over. good. Amy's and I remember, like, stuff. I do some of the, I have the sneakers, the, the Nike sneakers, still brand new. There was one pair because every year they would give you maybe one or two pairs. And if they didn't weren't dirty, I didn't use them, and I still have them brand new. Wow, They're back in style. Nice. We were converse, one, one, I think, one, when one, I was there. By the way, they don't the, fit anymore. Just to let you know, I'm no longer an eight and a half. <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> One of the trips we went on was to the Independence Bowl in Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana. This is football mm -hmm. now, uh, I think my second year. So this is post football season. We're in, you know, December maybe. Uh, and freezing cold in Syracuse. We're, you know, as a group, we're going to Louisiana. It's going to be hot. We're going swimming. You know, it was freezing cold in Louisiana, but we went <laughs> swimming anyway. <laughs> And so uh -huh. you may have seen from some of the photo album I put together, we had a great time down there. <laughs> we were getting crazy in the hotel rooms and yeah, mm -hmm. it was fun. Well, do you want to share any more of that? I mean, you know, the, the, you know, the statute limitations are up, but you, you go right ahead. <laughs> oh, no. uh, yeah, I don't know if I can remember anything specific that happened, but. Well, I had um, that much fun, huh? That much fun. Part of this, the story, I, I put together this Google Photos album of the, the time that I was there and all the cheerleaders that yeah, were you present. shared it with and, me. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And it, but uh, uh, an interesting backstory to that was uh, as much time as we were together every day, every second, whatever, then you go to work for 40 years and then you retire and you try to do this, this thing that I did. I couldn't remember. I was checking with Michelle and I couldn't remember anybody's name first or last. All I had was a thousand pictures Mm -hmm. of everybody's faces and wherever we were and trying to, you know, I, I spent six months getting in touch with everybody to figure out who the names were, where everybody was, what, what, where the photo was from, put it all together, chronological order. You know, so that, that was just a, a great uh, exercise, but it was just kind of funny from a human nature point of view that you spend so much time with these people and then you go to work for 40 years and you don't remember anything. <laughs> so, you mentioned you mentioned the pyramids. I'm going to ask. I'm going to talk about that because an, an, an event happened January in uh, 17th and 82 where Michelle had an accident, mm -hmm. and it had to do with some of the pyramids and the stacking that occurred. Um, Amy or Eric, were you guys around when that occurred? I yeah, was I was in, there. Yeah, Eric. I was there, and I was in the stands. Okay, mm -hmm. Eric, were you on the sidelines? Part of that, right? You were in that picture. Um, I had just come back from clown college, so I wasn't part of this particular formation. I was standing on the sidelines. And, but you were, you were at I was, there, I was there as well, Michelle. I was there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. So it was, it was a very, very cold January day. Um, Georgetown was ranked, I know, in the top 10. I'm not sure just where they were. I'm going to give them credit. I looked it up. Yep. I'm, I'm going to yep. give them proper credit, Gene. Oh, yeah. This. Oh, Seven. yeah. Ranked seventh at, in the country, 
We had over 25,000 people in that game. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Patrick Ewing was on the team at that time. And so came time for the first time out and we were ecstatic. You know, the crowd was deafening. There, I mean, there's no way to hear. So we were doing this stunt called Swedish Roll and it was a couple levels high and we had two halves to it and we used a mini tramp where a uh, um, one of the male cheerleaders would do a somersault from the trampoline through the pyramid. And then the top girls were supposed to roll off and be caught into another cheerleader's arms. Well, between the timing on the sound, you couldn't hear anything. The count was off and I rolled into my tumbler and it turned me head first and then I landed on the court. It was an accident um blame it you know any every sport has an accident mm -hmm. and i'm sure sure this one got a lot of attention it was on national television mm -hmm. we didn't have the social media but television um captured it mostly the audio they were away on a commercial at that time mm -hmm. and i was in icu for three days i healed 100 percent I went back to the squad yes, and yeah. Um, I got I, I got to ask this history. I, I got to ask Gene, cause I've never had a chance to talk to him about this. What I, I can tell you what it was like in our huddle because my back was to the crowd. And when I heard the noise and 25,000 wow. people just went silent. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have goosebumps right now, just talking about it. Gene, what was it like in your huddle? Did, did you, were you guys impacted? Were you aware? Well, I, I, I probably not as aware as, as, as I am now, like in terms of how I feel now, but I do remember, um, our coach was really a stickler for, for checking everyone's temperature. And he just wanted to make sure we were all okay. I do remember looking at our cheerleaders and they were all like locked in, like they were all um, concerned, uh, deeply moved, but it, it was one of those times where the game became less, less yep. important and, and mm -hmm. the human uh, took over. So yeah, there was definitely, there was a, a definite pause. Uh, Jim, and Jim Beheim said, and I, I, I give him a lot of credit coach for the first time in my life, I wanted to stop playing. Mm -hmm. And I, I just remember like, like what you described, Michelle, in terms of the crowd and what was going on, the atmosphere, mm -hmm. it was the craziest game at that point so far. Absolutely. Absolutely. And because Georgetown 7th, obviously the rivalry. Of course, we're not going to talk about Thompson's comment about Manly Fields. We're going to just pretend that never happened. <laughs> but that certainly didn't build any goodwill for us, right? So the whole, the, the whole event, and I just remember turning, and you weren't really more than – 10 yards from me from where I was standing in the huddle. And I was like, Oh my God. And I remember hitting the guy next to me, like, Oh my God. And, 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 you know, we were on the back of the huddle. Right. Cause remember the benches used to be on the other side. And yes. I just remember like, Whoa. And, and I, it, it was an audible shock. And then to hear you, Michelle, your 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 it echoed through the dome. It was like you you'll never never lose that memory. I just right. remember it. And uh, Amy Amy and Eric, I just kind of want to get your thoughts on the on the timing and and being a part of that. What I, what do you what do you remember, Eric? I remember that like you said, the entire dome became silent. Could hear a pin drop. And, and um, <clears throat> Michelle was in shock and. It was it was just it was incredible. They came back from the the television commercial, and they the poor announcers didn't know what to do. They they were lost. Yeah, right. That they was, couldn't uh, turn off the audio, so they could hear me screeching. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And that was but Bob they Costas. It was a national broadcast game. NBC. Yep. 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 How about you, Amy? Do you, what were your the silence? It was complete silence, and then hearing you. I think everyone was in shock. Really, it was, mm -hmm. it was, and it went on for a while, this period of time too. Yep. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I think they mm -hmm. finally announced later that you were in the hospital and stable. 
Yes. And I think things started to normalize, if you can say that, but Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. it would definitely lasting impact to this day. You know, that was Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Now, as a result, I think 100%, all of a sudden everything changes in the cheerleading world that we're not going to do stacks and pyramids. Now, our local high school was our rival, Binghamton North, was well known for their pyramids. They didn't do all the other parts, but they used to stack. And all of a sudden that became taboo everywhere. Um, Talk a little bit about some of the changes that then transpired in cheerleading. Uh, Amy, I don't know you want to take that or what, but like, what were some of the things that went on after that? Well, we certainly didn't have a mini tramp. I never saw Mini tramps were banned, yeah. That was definitely gone. We still did a um, couple stunts were big. Um, spotting, there was a, a profile on spotting. We always had spotters and spotters. But it, when we went out on the court, we would do three high pyramids. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we practiced them a lot. And we're pretty good at them at that point. We knew we had confidence. And that was the one thing you knew about your partner. You had full confidence in him. Yes. I knew he was always going to be there. That's where it became like more of a brother sister kind of thing. Like he knew me, I knew him. I had confidence. That's about what I could say for change in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, the one thing coach Bayheim said too, because I wrote both of these quotes down. I thought they were pretty profound was, I guarantee you'll never see that at Syracuse again Um, because they were talking about some of the rule changes and some of the changes that came about in cheerleading. I know in high school, the one thing, because I coached for a long time here too, that now you have to have matched. There's certain safety factors and features that were never part of any of your guys' experiences. So, um, and then Eric, now you went into coaching. What was that like in terms of what you had to do in terms of teaching the cheer with a little more, guidance i guess um after michelle's accident the university brought in a man from the university of kentucky who was an expert on cheerleading and he evaluated the entire program and recommended a lot of new things uh he recommended things that weren't necessarily athletic you know flipping and jumping and spinning more the things with signs um we started doing like spelling out Syracuse on the microphone over the loudspeaker system. And um, when I was still a cheerleader, they selected me to do that. So that was quite amazing to go out there and have that microphone and and be trying to get 20,000, 25, 26,000 people all to to do something new. Um, But that was the the thing. We had a new coach that year, 84, um, when I started coaching the JV squad, which was also a new thing to have a feeder program. Um, We we concentrated on entertaining the crowd and making them laugh and making them have fun. And that was kind of the direction that we ended up going in. Um, Did you ever take your unicycle to games as a cheerleader? (laughs) I got in so much trouble. You did? At Madison Square Garden. (laughs) They saw, me, <laughs> they saw me arrive with the unicycle and a man from the, from the stadium came over and talked to me and said, no, 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 no. Resist the urge. Do not go out there. And um, eventually there was a timeout that the cheerleaders had not planned anything for. And everybody turned and looked at me and said, well, go out there and do something. Oh so I grabbed the unicycle. Opportunity. And I started riding around the court and the fattest New York city policeman came out of the stands and started chasing me around the court. And it was so easy. It was so easy to like Keystone cops. It was awesome. It was one of the funniest things I've ever been involved in, but I knew I was going to be in deep, deep trouble when I got, you know, when I finally got caught. You're going to be famous. I rode over to where the pep band was sitting and I jumped off the unicycle and I reached back, grabbed it. And I threw the unicycle at the band. <laughs> they took it and it disappeared. It like got passed <laughs> to the back of the crowd oh, and it just disappeared. Oh. <laughs> and the, uh, the cops were like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so they just left me 
Oh and my gosh. The game. Yeah, it was great fun. But that was the sort of thing that that we started <clears throat> trying to do different things and entertaining things. Um, that was also the change. We had gone for about a year with no mascot. Yes, really we did. At all. At Big all. controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody, Dome Eddie, Dome as, Ranger. As a part of right? as a part of the rebuilding of the team, they put the mascot as a part of the cheerleading squad, which it had never mm -hmm. been before. And um I had submitted some drawings and stuff saying, you know, maybe we should not have a guy in a skirt. The uh the uh, Greek warrior. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe we should do an orange man since we're called the orange men. So um, I never heard anything from anybody, but that fall, uh oh, you're good. Hey, um, okay, that fall, a uh, big box showed up at the band office, and they said, "Hey, come on down." So these There's, are uh, what I'm putting up right now. If you're watching the show, if you're just listening to it, you won't see it. These were some of the notes that Eric sent me on his scribbled <laughs> ideas and concepts <laughs> of a, of a mascot. And then this. Still have them. Wow. Oh, oh my man. gosh. Hey, uh, Eric, I got to give you credit for putting the censored part here. That was very good thinking right there. <laughs> <laughs> got to give you a lot of credit there. That was very, very much way ahead of your I, time. I didn't even know Eric did that. I, you know, when I was there, the Saltine Warrior was in place in my freshman year. And then I believe in my sophomore year, it transitioned to the warrior of some kind. Cause I, I remember him being at the independence bowl and then it went to um, probably nothing. And then the orange, nothing. maybe the orange by my senior year, but I didn't know Eric designed that. It's it's funny. You said that bill about the saltine warrior. Cause if I, I have, uh, I have an old Syracuse banner, like remember the old pennant banners mm -hmm. and there's, and there's a saltine warrior and, People all picture the orange and the cute little orange guy, and they're like, "Well, that's always been the mascot." I'm like, "Do you know who the no. orange man is? Like, you know no. what that stands for? That's the, the right the the Onondaga yeah. nation. Yes. Yeah. yes, Onondaga nation, the Saltine Warrior, and you know, and St. John's was a Redman, and we were the Orange Men, and you know, there was mm -hmm. a little rivalry there. Oh and, yeah, and there was a there was a move. Yes. And it would happen a lot during football season because I remember Joe Morris's year. I was a freshman, and there was a saltine warrior running around the stands. Yep. Prior to the Dome Ranger running the stands. The Dome Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> well, this the was Dome prior because <laughs> because we didn't have a mascot, so everybody kind of Dome Eddie wore a big orange afro wig, and then there was the Beast of the East, this big green creature with yeah. whatever. So to your point, Eric, I mean, we were without a mascot. So what did you do with your drawings? So how did you how did you present that? Um, I as a as a response to this man's report who had had um, suggested we do all these new things in cheerleading, I I said, look, we should really we should really consider having the mascot, you know, really be a part, an integral part of the, the squad and travel with the squad and and um, that it's all history. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time with the right skills to make make that happen. Well, and today's today's orange does look a little bit different than the orange then. I have a right. picture. You have a picture of the original orange. Can you say? Oh, there you go. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was. That's very similar to to the drawing. That was about 130 degrees in the costume, Eric. Was it? Oh. Uh huh. No, yep. it was. I wore it once. I wore it once for a uh, national championship lacrosse game. That had oh, to be pretty. It was so hot. That had to be pretty ripe in there, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Two of us shared the costume because it was so hot. We went back and forth. Oh man, it smelled. <laughs> you shared oh. the costume. Yeah. That's you love. could you could smell Talk it standing near sister. it. That's that, love. That costume had to have its own bus ride back, man. That's love. No, it was, it was required oh. when we got on the bus with the band that that oh. uniform had to go underneath in the bus because it could not get in. Oh, We're like, no, and you must shower before you get on the bus. And it was usually a fraternity, if I remember correctly. Those are the gentlemen who 
wore the costume. So every year, this is fraternity picked who was in the costume. I don't know how they do it now. Yeah, I don't know if it stayed. It was Lambda Chi Alpha, I think. And I had a friend who was in that fraternity. And that's the only reason I know that that fraternity used to be the Saltine Warrior every year. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that same fraternity became the Otto Orange or not. But yes, they did. Yeah. But oh. um, they they selected two men that were the same size which was incredibly important because that was the problem with the salt, not the saltine warrior, but the Roman gladiator costume was that one day you would be six foot four and 170 pounds. And the <laughs> next game, he would be five foot six and 240 pounds. And it was like, <laughs> eh. not exactly it, Russell Crowe. It was really hard to act tough and be, if it was a different guy every week. So there you go. Yeah. Okay, I got I got to ask you a couple things. Uh but for, first, Michelle, I just want to ask you one question. After the accident, what was what was it like with the community and the feeling? Cuz one even John Thompson made a comment, "How's the little girl?" Like he made a comment after the game, which I know Gene's going to say is a little out of character, but what yeah. what was it like for the recovery part? I know the yeah, like the community. The, what was that like? We'll come back from that. What, what was that? Yeah. Well, there was a tremendous outpouring of support. I received 300 plus cards, a phenomenal amount of um, flowers from NBC, Villanova, Georgetown, Syracuse. I mean, it was just an, such an outpouring of love and support. It was very uplifting. Um, after that, Everywhere I went, obviously, then I was recognized. Um, and our game back to Georgetown. Yes. After they announced the teams, the Hoya came out and presented me with a rose, which was very nice. And we the have crowd the video was, of that. We have the video. Oh, that. do you? I don't yes, have the do. video. I'll and have to then, share it with you. We have it. And then John Thompson, in not so true form, leaned over and said, You won't do that in this game, will you? And I said, no, sir, you know, <laughs> but yes, it was, so it was such a wonderful support system from everybody everywhere. It was wonderful. That's good. Uh, Gene, you're not surprised you said that, are you? I'm, I'm really not. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> we, we took mu much of his wrath, but there's no way that um, he wasn't going to seize the moment to, to show <laughs> the, the human side of himself. So yeah, mm -hmm. well, well done, Big John. Well done. Rest mm -hmm. of the, well done. Mm -hmm. so, yes, he was wonderful. So now I want to ask you guys, we're going to wrap up in a bit, but I want to ask you, think of like one of your favorite memories or experiences or funny stories that you'd like to share. Um, and just give, give me a nod and you can start. I, I don't know, Eric, you want to start? Like that that's being chased by the cop might be a, yeah, I don't think I'll do that one. I think that one's good. We're we gonna leave that, that one. All right. Okay. <laughs> how about mis beautiful. How about misspelling the, the the word Syracuse to the crowd at twenty thousand people? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I once gave me an S. Give me a Y. Give me an A. <laughs> oh, what does that spell? For weeks, people kept coming up going. Diacuse. Huh? Beautiful. Okay, anybody else? Uh, I remember, nope. I think my sophomore year, we played in the ECAC postseason conference against Georgetown at Maryland. Three things um, against Georgetown. Love it. <laughs> and then we went on to NCAAs. The first round was in Providence. Second round was in Greensboro. Now, Greensboro, right down the street from me now, um, North Carolina was in the bracket and Duke was in the bracket. They both lost. Otherwise, they'd be playing in Greensboro. Um, we called it Black Friday. Um, nobody showed up to the game. I mean, it would have been super packed if either Duke or Carolina was there, but it was just Syracuse playing um, Penn. Um, and then I, can't, I forgot what the other team was, but that. <laughs> I think that was just kind of, that was my, I didn't live in North Carolina at the time. So it was, a, it was a great trip and everything, but it was just disappointing to see no fans there because their home team's lost. Michelle, you have anything, any funny memories or stories or? One, one that always sticks in my mind, it was my sophomore year and we were playing 
Navy at Navy. Not Georgetown, see. No, this one's a football story. And I guess they have a tradition that the plebes go and capture the other team's mascot and take it over to their side and they pass the mascot up the crowd. Well, we didn't have a mascot at that game oh, and no. they captured me. Oh no. <laughs> I was scared to death because they started up through the crowd and I think the cheerleaders on Navy could see, you know, how terrified I was and they're put her down. I command you put her down. And eventually, you know, they, they brought me down, but that is a memory I will never forget. Cause you, I, you, I don't I, know. I won't, I won't either. <laughs> I will never forget that. <laughs> so you were, you were a rock star. You were crowd surfing before you even knew it. Before crowd surfing was a tent. That's right. Yes. That's right. All right, Amy. Well, I think the whole thing was one big fantastic memory and great time. You always knew when yes. you were there that you really appreciated how great every moment was. But I'd have to say how nice you as basketball players were always to us. Whether you stopped on your ride home to give us a ride to Sky Top or the Pearl, he always held the door for you. You guys were always so nice, like respected us treated us so nice so that that was probably the best part and probably what people don't understand is how tall you guys are because oh we gosh. the room was right next to yours and ours was like a closet and i will you guys we all pass each other and i just remember thinking wow you know because in scale when you see you you don't really know but when you're next to you you're like and the coach for Georgetown, he was big too. I was like, yeah. oh yeah. Wow. And when you have this this massive amount of tall people, you're like, this is incredible. So, so I, you do you want to share a little bit more? Because I know you had a pretty good relationship with Pearl. You want to talk a little more about that? Just take a couple minutes to talk about that at all. Amy. Me, um, yeah. he was always just so nice. Whenever I saw him, he was always, hello, how are you? Um, I would I would see him up at Sky Top. There was a, a, like a dining hall and all the basketball players would be around a table and they were playing some game. And I'm thinking now maybe it was dominoes or something. And I think they were drinking a little and they were all having so much fun. They yeah. weren't drinking. They weren't drinking. <laughs> well, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. <laughs> and I think that there was something and they had to pass around a hat. And when you got the hat, you had to dance around your chair and sit back down. I don't know what it was, but they were they were always having a good time. So I, the pearl was a little had a little special place in my heart for him. Now, did you like when he got on when he got on campus? Things changed. Like his he, there was an electricity about him, so that had to be like a dichotomy to see that publicly and then to get to know him a little more personally. Mm -hmm. That's a very common denominator. I felt the same thing with him as well. So, you know, those are just so effortless stories that are so true just a kind kind man that's all right. i can say great stuff well everybody i really appreciate your time on a sunday morning we're we're filming this and uh thanks for all your honesty and and michelle for sharing that experience that was that was something that i, and I don't think anybody here would ever forget so uh mm -hmm. thank you very much you. and uh, mm -hmm. i i knew there was a a, a great feeling on the recovery part because i know that that was definitely something that we had talked about as a mm -hmm. as a team mm -hmm. and i know the communities it's nice to hear though it wasn't just a syracuse georgetown and villanova and some other communities because the big east one thing that of doing this show is that we're finding from all these different different communities there really was a tremendous common bond like Gene talked about, you know, we talked trash, we had adversaries, we banged heads. But honestly, there was so much more we had in common that it's mm -hmm. been fun to do this because people really open up and they're free to talk about it. So I thank you guys all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for hanging us. Thanks. Thank you for your service over the years. You guys were instrumental Amen. in everything that was going on, on the court. I only wish we spent more time with you guys. I mean, we never really got to mingle. No, no, it wasn't yeah. wasn't our tradition. Yeah, like the Nova, they just they were always together. Like it seemed like yeah. it was one party they all went to, you know. Well, it's a little late now, but this this, this is a great effort. <laughs> this is close, right? Yes, yes, close. yes. Close. Well, I know 
Hey, Michelle's hometown's not too. Thank Michelle's hometown's not too far from me, and Amy's got some friends down in the Jersey area, so we may hook up at some point. So it'll be great. All, All right, well, thanks for having the boy. I want to thank you yep. for having the boy. Gene. Thanks for stepping in. Appreciate you thank always. You. Thanks, folks. Thank you, Gene. Thank All right, you. thank you. Thank you.